Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Merry Christmas! Today we are going to talk about what is probably the most requested instrument in the comment section since day one, the Korg Chaosilator Pro. This 2010 pimped up version of the cute little OG Chaosilator has been on top of my list for months, but I think it is the ideal tool to bring a little noise into this quiet time. Many instruments like, for example, last week's very Germanic quasi midi Sirius have a great story of innovation, technological evolution and the history of a thriving music scene linked to them. After doing some research on the Chaosilator Pro it seems like it is just an instrument. Ok, its older siblings, the Chaos Pad and the OG Chaosilator were used by many artists ranging from John Paul Jones we're not worthy to Radiohead, while the Chaosilator Pro itself was seen in the proximity of John Hopkins and Kimbra. However, it raises suspicion when even the one and only Jordan Rudess of Dream Theater has a hard time demoing a synth. <laughs> At the first glance the Korg Chaosilator Pro is ticking all the boxes. One of these touch sensitive Saturday Night Fever dance floors, plenty of DJ gear style rubber buttons and knobs for volume and menu diving. You can plug in another device or microphone for looping, processing and vocoding and there's a dedicated slider for the arpeggiator. Maybe inspired by the micro sampler debacle Korg included a card reader. I appreciate the USB connectivity and the dedicated editor software worked fine, at least on my Windows computer. Korg included 200 barely tweakable programs, not only FX sounds tailored to the pad controller but also bright leads, plasticky basses in the best sense of the word, chords, drums, patterns and an FX section with a strong focus on vocoder sounds. 8 of these patches can be assigned to one of the speed dial slots. The Chaosilator Pro is an easy to understand instrument. Choose a program, do stuff on the pad, record it to one of the 4 looper slots, repeat. You can stack as many sounds as you wish onto one bank but it gets a little tricky to untangle them afterwards as there is, big bummer, no undo feature that I am aware of. Not rock solid at all is the MIDI implementation. Not only is it kinda tricky to get the unit in sync with other gear, there are some serious limitations when you want to play the sounds using a keyboard or DAW. The built-in synth engine only responds to control change messages. There are some tutorials and instructions on how to translate note messages to CC the Chaosilator will respond to in a musically meaningful way, but come on. As we have already started breaking the Christmas piece, in spite of the thought-out scale, key and note range settings, the pad is most probably not the ideal interface for playing melodies. The visual feedback you get from it isn't always helpful and I couldn't find any quantization features. Not that I needed them. Speaking of timing, loading times. Long and frustrating loading times. There's 5-pin MIDI with the aforementioned limitations and the main audio ins and outs are RCA only. Not a big fan of that. The successor of the Chaosilator Pro, the Chaosilator Pro Plus is still in stock in many stores and I'm not sure if I would pay that much money for one of them if it wasn't Christmas. In spite of its flaws, the Chaosilator Pro seems like a more than decent stocking filler. Why are there so many people who want to see it on the show? You have already heard the Chaosilator Pro in our little intro tune. I have to admit that I didn't play all the sounds on the unit's pad and I already miss 80s romplers. Let's see the synth in action in this video showing a romanticized version of its workflow. It 
would be great if I was able to use the unit this way, but some of you might have already noticed the video editing magic. I'm sure that there are people who can pull this off, but I was struggling with the lack of quantization, hitting the right notes on the pad and the variety of nasty UI quirks. There has been a lot of talk about missed opportunities when it comes to the Chaos Later Pros MIDI implementation and sync features. I wanna try some workarounds in this stallless drum and bass jam. Again, this might look better on video than it was actually fun to play. It took me quite a long time to figure out how to keep the loops in sync with the outside world and play the programs with the BeatStep Pro without using a computer or dedicated MIDI translator hardware. Whenever I pick up a new piece of gear, the first thing I do is take a look whether it can produce a cowbell sound. I only found one on the Chaosilator Pro, but when I heard it in combination with all those late zero year sounds, I instantly knew what I had to do to create this progressive house EDM celebration of Canadian-European friendship and obsolete communication devices. The Korg Chaosilator Pro is a mixed bag. Most people, including me, love Korg, and many of the sounds of the unit are great, but for a long list of reasons, it just doesn't fit into any of my workflows, be it dollar setups or computer-based music production. Like so many people pointed out in the comments, it's close, but no cigar. If it was at the center of a Kickstarter campaign that went viral, I would shrug it off with a simple, maybe next year. But when dealing with products of established companies like Korg, it happens too often that they won't even fix the most obvious flaws in a major hardware update. There are instruments that give you the feeling that you are painting the hallway through the letterbox. The Chaosilator Pro is more like trying to play an electronic live set while being in the midst of an Edward 40 hand spender. Don't get me wrong, I would love to incorporate the Chaosilator Pro in my jams, but the wish letter to the almighty Korg Santa is a bit too long for my taste. Hopefully, the next incarnation of the Chaosilator Pro is the synth of a Christmas yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next year! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like and subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.